ياك اي يخسطيني تقلتك اتيوهان كلشي شاتي اعطي قلت يا شو قوى ايا اختي واسكو خسكو وي واسك اختي سا كتخت سوى قاق قاقو خسك اخشخت ستيج قا قلت قد اتقد نوك شكالنيكي هل كدين خسكو بلاي تلات قاق عينخ هاي دي كاكني كداد كاش قلت يدى تقي تواسكو تلات قاق عينخ هل واسكو قوتي هاي ان كالني كداد Tell us about the tell us about the show. Um, uh, I, I, can't know, I can't know anything about it. Um, uh, it's a it's a one person show, and uh, it's a script by an Iranian uh, playwright. I know that. Um, there's like a number of performances from actors from from all over uh, here in California, all over the place, and it's through Perseverance Theater. So each performance is um, the actor's first time seeing the script and reading it. I got a little thing. I got a PDF today. It was just telling me, you know, if you see dot dot dot, to take a pause and emphasize words that are capitalized you know that's all the direction i get <laughs> uh, tomorrow it starts tomorrow with martin sensmeyer he's doing it first and then um i do it on saturday and then allison holt camp and there's another uh, on sunday and then i don't know like six six or seven more actors will do it so every time it's a new interpretation of the script and this is all by design this is what the playwright wanted um so I don't know wow. is the best <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is, gonna, is all I could say about it. Um, what time? 7.30 uh, each night starting tomorrow with Martin Zenzmeyer. I can't even watch his performance. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll do what he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I uh, can't, can't even watch that. And then... Uh, yeah, seven thirty. I, I, you know, they say log on at like seven twenty, and then I start. <laughs> so it should be should be interesting, and then, uh, yeah, and it's all donation. I think it's don. They have suggested donation amounts um, for the tickets, and uh, through Perseverance PTAlaska dot org, and uh, I think they said twelve dollar suggested donation, and. That's probably per performance. So, um, okay. Tia Carrera, um, which is a movie. Obviously, I was the help raised me. So that's a that's a big one. <laughs> and someone from uh, How I Met Your Mother. I've never seen the show, but um, someone from there too. So it should be pretty fun. Okay. Uh, any other announcements? That'll be fun. So check it out, folks. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to do language. Well, how do we say? How do we say? Um, break a leg. Well, I guess the, we got to figure out, we got to untangle that a little bit because uh, <laughs> number one, whose leg? And number two, are we commanding somebody to say like, go break someone's leg? Is that what we're supposed to say? I guess the origin of- hey, hey. Yeah. It's, uh, I've always heard it said that when they say break a leg, it's when you're auditioning because they want you to get into the cast. Oh, to get into the cast. Okay. I think it's breaking your own leg. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, 
and it just I feel like just means like good luck but you're not supposed to say that right it's like you know when you're telling a fisherman to go out you don't tell if it, you say you know like what you know like shit luck or something you know things like that <laughs> well in french for dancing they say merde which is you know crap <laughs> so uh maybe we could take that interpretation oh. well so i and say that one again merde which is like shit <laughs> oh, okay well, so like this, this would be, um, so let me show you how to get there, right? So if I'm thinking of like, okay, someone comes up with a phrase, they say, how do you say this? And then we sort of untangle it a little bit. And I think it's also like, I had also heard like, you're not supposed to wish someone good luck because then something bad will happen. So then you wish them bad luck and you're really saying like, break your own leg, right? So that, that as well, right? So if this sends us into the verb dictionary, uh, I will just jump right to tlich because I'll, I'll just give you a cheat code, which is there's different ways to break different types of things, and you're going to break a stick-like object. And this is how you would break a bone. Uh, so then, you know, if we go through and we see tlich, uh just looking at these verb themes, for the subject to break the object, oh yeah, that's breaking, for S to break O, often by bending mm, probably not, you're probably not trying to bend your own leg and tell it like who could do that really <laughs> uh, to to break just for like oh it broke and then uh for a long object to break so then sort of reading the descriptions the definitions that brings us into the first one so then you're going to look at right at the beginning, you're going to get a command form. But th this is going to change a little bit. And the reason it's going to change is because you're going to break your own leg. So this pushes us into this category where, so the subject does the verb, the object it has the verb done to them, right? It's pretty much how it works. But if the subject is also the object, then the classifier has to go what we call plus D. So this the D the letter D pops up in there. This triggers a couple other changes. So one, a command form is going to be as what we call the minus I form of the classifier or the default form. So in this case, it's a zero because it's a zero group classifier. But a zero group classifier that's plus D, but not plus I, is duh, D A. So I'm going to, but you can't say na, da, e. And there's a, there's a bit of a rule here. If it goes plus D, the command form must contain the pronoun I, the second person pronoun. So like, What's what's interesting about the site about this the command form is that you don't say you do it you just say do it right and, and so it's just an interesting thing there's usually no pronoun involved it's just totally absent unless you're pluralizing then you get that y in there so in this case na plus i plus da I would expect ni da so, uh, what I would probably then do is throw an sh right here where the object is to the self, and then we would end up with um, schnitzlich ichus, break your own leg. Uh, However, if we got up to like, if, if I was just telling you, go out and break some people's legs, which, you know, we're just, we're starting off with uh, just general leg breaking, whatever. So then I would say, um, so the um, would be peoples. 
break people's legs, right? So I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe I'm like some kind of think it mafia person and they bought a bunch of dictionaries, didn't even pay me. So I'd be like, time to go break some people's legs, right? So I don't know what other context there could be. But I knew it, <laughs> I knew it the whole time. That's right. The whole thing is a, just a big, uh, just a big sham. <laughs> so there we got uh, break your own leg. So now we can Okay, break a leg. Or you could tell someone to break something out. And it could be like just a stick too. Uh, let's see. Well, on Friday at 2 o'clock, uh, I'm giving an artist talk if anybody wants to go. Just so that you know, there's, um, I got a piece that's installed at the Penn Museum. Uh, it has a uh, silver sculpture by Yilchitzin Nick Galanen, and it's a tribute piece to a lot of elders that I uh, have worked with. Uh, one of them is still around. Um, but yeah, check it out if you got some time. Uh, anybody else? Any other announcements? Anything else going on? The snow finally stopped. Yeah, I think it's... I think it might melt. Gwashka gwasha. Stick cut that. Yehwaji. Kone aye kunatini. So I think it's starting to get warm. At least it feels like it when you go outside and walk around. So. But we'll see. Never know. Like, ka di ya yagi. Oh, Ah, same, same, uh, same, same. Ah, oh. how? Oh. Wush can a day, wush can a day, dame, in the vicinity of the trails that go up together. Ah, oh. Achadi. I've never seen one. Hmm. Okay. Any language? Questions or things you're thinking about? Uh, yes. Um, we were having a, a discussion in our little practice session today about um, uh, um, <laughs> I'm blank, sorry. Uh, <laughs> when you say uh, the the different ways of of recognizing when you say um, wasa itu a ti or um, or if it's like feeling or physical or inside or the different ways of um, saying those things. So I kind of go towards like removing the question part of it and that helps me to understand um, how to do that. So let me pull up this thing I was going to show you folks and then we'll just do a blank page so, um, so if, let me get rid of these first so if i were to say like yay tea and then i would say it is um that way so it's to be right so there's different ways that this could be used like if someone says um you're grumpy you know, it's a yichatyati. That's how I am, right? So that that's just how, like, just how I am. It's to be usually a certain way is yeyati. And then if you have a uh, tuati, I think of that as um, to want, right? So if 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 I were to use this. Um, or I guess let me put myself in there. So if I would say, I am that way. And then um, I could say, uh, and I would say, that is how I want it. 
Um, or I guess let me say ye awe. Let me change that a little bit. Achtuati. Yeah, achtuati. So if I was in the context of making talking about something, I'll say, uh, "Well, I sure hope um, the water is calm, so I could put my boat in the water." That's how I want it. And then I could say, um, "Yeah, uh, we have to do a spelling assistance on this one." So Yeshtuch de Nuk is um that is how I feel. And then just for fun you could say oops Yekuchanuk uh and say I am doing it. I do that. So if we kind of look, so we, we have two of these that have to do with T and two of them that have to do with nuke. And just sort of, if if we want to sort of start unpacking these, I, I would start at the verb root. So the verb root T is to be, right? And so I'm just trying to see if there's a to a T verb. Yeah. So well, I guess it is that way. Okay. Oops. There. So T is uh, to be, right? And then what this is doing here is putting a noun onto the verb. So that's what the T is doing both here and here. Right. Um, these these next two. So, but they both have this be right. So to be, and to be inside. So, like if you were to say wasaiyati, I would say um, oops, I put the question on there. So this one, I would say, like if we were just doing a pretty literal thing, how you be. How's, how is, you know, how are you? But um, yeti is to be a certain way, right? So how are you being? But, you know, it, it's a little awkward when we try to push that be verb, you know, so you could just say, like, how are you, right? And, but that's all you're asking, how are you? And if you were to say, um, wasa itu wati, so that's a little bit different. And this is something Kin Gisti used to talk to us about. He said, if I were to say that to an elder, they would probably tell me what they wanted. But I have certainly heard people say it for how are you doing with a bit of an emotional emphasis. So how are you emotionally, but also... Um, what do you feel like doing? So I gotta adjust this. And adjust this. So then that leaves us with um, maybe two more. So these, the nuke verbs, and let me just rearrange this a little bit. Sorry. So even the even though these ones have the same um, looking verb root, nuke and nuke, I would probably say those are two different ones. Okay. So there is a nuke verb which means to feel like uh, I 
the sensation of feeling it. Like I can feel the wind blowing. I can feel something touching my elbow, right? So it has to do with feeling, not like feelings, but the sensation of feeling. One of your five senses, I guess, what they talk about. That is this one. So it means to feel a certain way, to feel something inside. So usually when you say, um, this is something you can do to be supportive of a whole other clan. Uhan Sushtatu Danuk. If you just said that, just that, we also feel that way. What you're saying is we are also sad. We are also sad. So there's a number of different things too where it's like there's this default sort of meaning that gets associated with it. But it's but so when you say wasa Stidenuk. You are saying, how do you feel? And I would probably say this is emotionally. All right? So how do you feel? So how are you? What, you know, so this one is... is just kind of interesting. I, I tend to not really use that too much um, because I feel like it does have that room for those two interpretations. And then, um, oops, I guess there's only one more. So then if you were to say, wa sa ki anuk, that is, what are you doing? And this is where Tlinga gets a little bit tricky. There's a number of different things that are technically how constructions that end up translating into what constructions in English, just because those, those concepts work differently in both languages, right? So if you're going to say, what happened? Anybody know how to say that? What happened? Wasa atune. So there's another wasa construction, right? So it, it's just kind of interesting. But so this one is like, you're going to end up with a verb, like I am sweeping, I am standing, I am walking, I am writing. It's some kind of action. Wasa kiyanuk is. This one has to do, I think the verb root has to do with um doing an action or just behaving a certain way okay so that's what that one has to do with so these are the different ways to sort of think about that they're, they're very very similar and in some cases almost interchangeable with some things but they are a little bit different so if i were to just ask someone how are you this is the most common way that i would ask someone oh what's the EAT? i might put a s an extra s in there what's the CAT? which is just softening it a little bit and saying, maybe say how you're doing. But if you don't want to, that, that's totally fine. Wasai to a T. I would probably use that one if I was going to say, like, uh, what do you want to do? Right? Wasashti um, Danuk. I would probably use that if I was just a little bit concerned about how someone was feeling. If I knew that they'd been sad or if I knew that they'd been... Um, you know, kind of frustrated with something, I, I might use this. Because, and a lot of it depends on how well you know someone, right? So, and that's, it's that way in English too. You could be really, you know, I went through quite a few deaths in my immediate family. And people ask me all the time, how you doing? I'm like, bad, sad. And there's a lot of people who are just like, I mean, you could just sense it that maybe they're thinking that might not be what I was looking for, right? So how are you is often like just a, you're just saying hi sometimes. Well, sometimes you mean it as well. If you know that person, spend time with that person, then you might be asking that. So that's when I would ask, what's that the nuke? How are you feeling? That's more of a, for me, that's more of an emotional check-in. And then what's that nuke is sort of like, um, I don't really ask people that. It's just like in a language drill, right? What am I doing? I am sweeping. What am I doing? I am walking. Right, um, because I've been told like this one in the wrong context could really seem like uh, judgmental and also like uh, 
a little invasive. They'd be like, well, that's none of your business. <laughs> but we learn it, it it's, we learn it in beginning Tlingit as just sort of a way to start talking. Because there, there's a lot of stuff built on these question and answer drills. How's the weather? How are you? How's this? What's, what's your name? How you call? How's your mom call? Where are you from? Right? Which is, you know, it's, it's helps because it learn, you learn all these patterns, but it's also like nosiness 101. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a good question. Anything else? Did you say like wasoe? Yeah, wasoe is a super casual way of just saying what's up. And that doesn't it doesn't even require an answer all the time. Wasoe, <laughs> huh? Yakeksatini. It's just like, what's up? And you know, when people ask you what's up, you know, it's like, well, you know. I was working on this thing, but sometimes again, it depends. And I've seen these, you know, the, when you watch fluent speakers and you watch like birth speakers and how they talk to each other, uh, especially if you had a chance to do it without any microphones on them, or if they don't know people are listening, it's kind of fun. Like sometimes they'll just say, huh. it's been a long time since I've seen you. And then, uh, then they just start talking. Like there was uh, Margaret Stevens and Nora Downhar. I watched them one time sit down at Kuik. They just start talking. It was it wasn't even no hi, how are you? It's just like she just sat down as as if the conversation. They like probably hadn't seen each other in years, but it was just like it's almost like it felt like she had just gotten up to get coffee and came back and just kept on talking. And then at some point she's like, "De kwakut, ah." And she just took off. It's like, so there's, you know, that's how the old schoolers did those things. But we, we adjust, we do things a little different sometimes. But then in, the, in another context too, like if I knew someone pretty well, I said, what's that, you tea? And if they say, ah, tu, you need, that's a, what's away? That's a different meaning. That is saying, what what's going on? What's up? Right, and a lot of this has to do with how well you know someone, and what your personal relationship is with them. Um, yeah, because if if you don't know them that well, and you said you know what's that yeti, achtu yanik ho iku ayakwan, and then maybe just leave it at that, and then you say they they'll tell me more if they want to. But you know, if you know them well, then maybe you yeah what's that bune what's that nene right what happened what's happening. But the reason for that is you're trying to figure out the right way to to be a comforting source for that person. So. Ah. Um, Gunas Tish, I appreciate your patience. I looked up what I tried to say on Tuesday, and it should be Gleit Ken Bagat. And when I went to figure out which verb it really was, I got into all those different falling verbs. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your patience. I went into the verb dictionary and learned that just like giving depends on what you're giving, so fall or drop has a bunch of different verbs. Yes. Oh, a powdery substance. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, let me look at the chat. And where does the K come from in here? Um, this is a sentence I, I tried to write down which which page it was on. Um, it's because it's it's making the the grain the grains of the snow are falling into a heap. Hmm. Look at page one fifty in the verb dictionary. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So and yeah, I thought about it because it's interesting, right? Because this yeah. this is um, so Qat is falling, and so yeah, we've got a whole bunch of whole bunch of things, right? So we do see plate came the cut, and here, uh, so K is upwards. So that's what got me. I was like, why is it falling upwards, right? And so, but things can fall upwards. Like, so dock would to get somebody fell down. K would to get they, they woke up. So you can fall upwards, which I, is really interesting because that's waking up, right? Um, and so maybe in kind of thinking of things, things do fall up as well. And so they are falling, but then the falling is calling, causing this piling so then you get a series of things so grain like objects to fall and to pile up and so what, what's really interesting with Tlingit is sometimes it will put two or three different concepts into these very small spaces yes it's falling but it's also causing this thing to rise okay let's cheese I don't know if I like the sentence after that. Nope, no. I thought if I just didn't work, like it would just, uh, it just all pushes back. Everything pushes back. I'll just stay in my state of denial about that sentence. <laughs> so uh, this it is fun because you have clash, which can contract to just a single L, right? It can certainly do that. Tuck is all the time. Uh, so if you're gonna say, I work all the time, I would then expect a repetitive form. This is another interesting thing. But you don't, so like, so well, let's just look at that. So, ach ye jenei, k right so it's going to pile up so just thinking of this we could also say i don't work all the time that's that's a pretty rad sense that, that should be my t-shirt i remember my friend uh he he made this business card and it said slacker on it and i was like i'm really impressed that you somehow found the time to make like a whole business card that was said that but um and then the ye on there this suffix on the end is saying tying this to the next thing right so the short answer of what this thing does is it says basically when when this thing then this thing there's a couple other ways to do that, but this is the easiest, most common way to do that. It's good when I see you, right? Technically, that's how that's working. It's not like it's not tying it to any specific like right now. You're just sort of saying it's good when I see you, right? So it's a little bit more of a win thing. That's how I've been just kind of thinking about it lately. But if we unpack this first part, we're going to go into uh, Aki Shawa's database. We'll go back in there and we'll go look up. We'll go look up work. I'm not trying to shame anybody for taking some time off. You do you. But we're going to go up to Nay. Oh, there was Nuke. I was looking that up. I always forget to close these things. You don't close them, they got to scroll for a long, long time. So here's. Uh, Nay, I, I would probably say there's actually these are two separate ones. I think the giving, taking, showing, that's actually a different one. It means to carry plural objects. Uh, and then, um, well, maybe the showing is just to do. So then you got a whole bunch of other ones to do. And we go down and we've got yej and nay to work. So just this is one of the ones where there's a whole bunch of it's already put into a whole bunch of different things for you. 
But what I want you to learn how to do is if you look at this, yay, then you've got j, you've got a zero classifier and a short high stem. Ne, 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 all the way down. Hairy seaweed all the way down. That's what that means. It's ne. But then if you look at what's in between there, I can make this bigger. Ha, i, nothing. Tu, ye, hus, and nothing. Do. So once you see this, you are going to learn how to now use a, any of the subjects. Now you'll know you'll know how to do that, right? Not yet, but we're gonna. That's the goal, so that you won't need this put in these seven different forms because you, you'll be able to do that yourself. So as long as I know what's going on in this verb and you'll know how to look at the third person because it's third person is unmarked. There's never ever a pronoun for the third person subject. It's always just there's just nothing there. But then you'll say, okay, well I change that to ha and I got ye jahani. Ye jine. There's a few things like with this, like there's a few sort of think it sound math things going on. But what I want to show you, so we have what we have is this one. So this is what they're saying. Kesh tlak ye jihwane. I don't work all the time. So the tluck can go in there as a bit of a sequence time marker all the time, right? But I wouldn't really expect someone to say tluck um, ye jechwane because it's got tluck in there. So because all the time is in there, I would expect uh, actually this one. Tluck ye jinchane. So there's a couple things that do need to pop up here. If we look at the third person, what we need is the conjugation prefix, which is shown to us right here in the theme. So there are some modes where that, that whatever is in this parenthesis needs to be activated. Okay. And that's this is one case. If we go down, so we need that. We need the na, and then it's going to be a zero because we don't see wa in there. And then you got to put ch at the end. So now we get jinhanage, jininage, jinanage, jintunage, jininage, hasjinanage, jindunage. Or hasjinanage. I think I put a little y in there. So what gets kind of interesting here is. Your mind might say, okay, well, if ye jin chanej is I work all the time or every time, then wouldn't klesh make it like I don't work all the time? And there's just a logic. It takes a sidestep. When you put klesh in front of this every time mode, you get haven't done it yet. So it, it's just pretty wild, right? So in the future, the teacher might say, Oh, I didn't work on it yet. Or you could say, I didn't work on it yet. But the yet part is in there. So it's really wild. Because then if you wanted to say, like, I haven't eaten that yet, I haven't seen them yet. Um, all of those are going to push into this kind of a little bit more advanced form. Okay. But for now, a lot of them are there. Like there are quite a few verbs where um, she went and got like all these different forms. Did I see a hand up? So let's talk for a second, and we're going to do a little uh, story building activity. So this will probably take us to the break, and then we'll come back and we'll make our own stories. Then maybe we'll get back into the yeesh, cut the cock. Um, so we've got three classes left. Don't panic. Um, but think about that. So 
we've got next week but the week after that we'll get together on tuesday and you folks will demonstrate your fine whatever final thing you've put together just some language demonstration we're just having we're just having fun this stuff is hard enough we don't need some pressure thing where you've got to like make or break anything right we're all just cruising along uh, so we're going to try and finish the Yil Khatukak story. But I just want to talk a little bit, I was talking to some folks uh, a couple of days ago about metaphor and how metaphor works. Because I think it's fun. Uh, it's a very important part of the language. If you're going to be speaking in a ceremonial fashion, you're going to be telling stories, you will be expected to use some of this figurative language. So one of the things is you could say, so we use these little curly brackets to say this is a fill in the, you pick one of these things, or you put one of these types of things in there. So you have a noun and then yach yati. So once you put yach in front of yati, now it means not to be, it's to be like something. And you could see this for a whole bunch of things, and some of them have very specific meaning. So uh, would be, it's like a whirlpool, but that means chaotic, usually in a bad way, but it, it's not, it could be in a good way. Like people were so, they, they won the, the gold medal after we finally have gold medal again, somebody wins and they, everybody's going crazy. And that would be, oh, it was really wild. They, they just were yelling with joy. But is another one of these things where like the default meaning would be was chaotic and hectic. It wasn't a good thing. But there's a set of about 20 common ones and maybe 50 total of specific nouns that push things into talking about colors. is a Stellar's J, but if you say you would really have to describe that you're saying it's a bird that is like it. Because if you just said that on its own, I would say, oh, it's blue. So this is how we talk about colors. If you look at the old recordings, you don't see anybody really talking about colors. Hardly ever. I don't think it was particularly important a long time ago. But then we can like so see how this works in other contexts. Uh, I was thinking about this because we were doing like Red Rabbit, White Rabbit, I think, for the title of this performance, this play that's coming up. Gukha. And everybody and everywhere except Yakutat, Gukha is a cup. For whatever reason, in Yakutat, Gukha is like a piss pot. And I don't understand how that happened. Because Guk is to dip up. Like if you had a um, ladle and you dipped up some, you know, if you had this big thing of coffee or soup or whatever, I'm going to dip it, right? Uh, so it's the one that dips. But for Yakutat, they say chashka. So when I go there, sometimes I say gukha, and then they tease me. And they'll say, it's chashka. I was like, yeah, but that's a Russian word. And we defeated them. We didn't take their language. So, you know, just teasing back and forth. But if I wanted to say that cup is blue, I would say So now here's a whole thing with two fill in the blanks. Right? So now you could do any of that. You could say what color anything is. As long as you know the name for the color, then you know the name of the thing. You can also say, uh, and so here's your pattern, color, yach, yati, way, noun. All right, so there's the pattern. But if you want to jump right to blue cup, then you do this thing where you take the verb, here's the short version, you take the verb and you put this little suffix on it that follows the rules of the possessive suffix Except for the tone, this one always stays low. So 
So then I would expect, if you want to say, uh, what was that? White rabbit, red rabbit, or maybe it's the other way around. Kleit yach yati yikach, ka an yach yati yikach. There have been cases where you go straight from the color noun to the thing. Kleit yesh, kleit hich. But some of the, a lot of the speakers that I've worked with, they would prefer the yachyati. Maybe it's like, because it, it's the white raven, and that's usually this this frog that people found in the ground. Like there's some big story, and it became atu, or it becomes some legend. Otherwise, you would use this. But you could take like chichan. So you could say chichani chichani, or chichani chichani, stinky socks. So what that thing does is it basically turns a verb into an adjective. Yuk-e-yi yagi, a good day. shuk e yi ni a uh, terrible sickness. Okay? So there's one thing. Let's see. So yeah, so that one, when they say that's a different suffix. Um, that one is more like the, so there. there's this other one. Let's see how I can do this. So we learn the rules of the possessive suffix, right? So we say uh, hit becomes ach hiti, and yak becomes du yak, right? So there's a set of rules, but one of those things is the tone of the suffix is the opposite of whatever's before it. So you go high low or low high this is the same thing right so we have uh, yuck a plus ich sitin right so if you want to put those things together it's good when i see you The verb itself does change. It tends to go into what we call like the negative perfective form. So it, the se will go to sa. The other thing that will happen is it'll get this similar suffix. It follows all those same rules. Once you've learned how to use the suffix, then it does that. And it seems to be more like when, uh, this, when, that kind of a thing, right? This, that, the other thing. Uh, and so now you can use this for all, all kinds of things, but you can also use it for, um, you could say, uh, what am I going to say? Nech kukwagudi. Kukwaha. So, what this is doing, so this would be uh, I'm going to come inside. But so I'm going to eat when I come inside. Okay. So that's what that thing is doing. Uh, so this one, if you just put it on its own, you'd have uh, well, I would expect um, you came, you came back. So this would be, uh, you were traveling and then you came back, right? 
So then, or this is maybe key. Kuchki de tin. You gotta look at this. Sorry. And then uh, the second part was a steich. Oops, I did it backwards. Nach to kuch. So this on its own is uh, let's go let's go fishing. This one is you returned. So we're going to do the same thing. So what we did here is this, this form. Um, oh yeah, that is, I did have it right, okay. Ach, tin. sorry. So um, this is de, and what we should expect to happen is it's going to change to da, um, get myself mixed up in these vowels. It's going to change to da, and then we're going to add an i at the end. So now, what am I doing? <laughs> look at, oh, okay. I hit the calf sock button. <laughs> so here we have kuch ki da tini, when you get back, when you get back, ast ech nach te kuch. And so you could, now you see some sort of pattern here as well. When you come back, um, we'll go to grandma's house or, or whatever the things are. Yeah. That's a good question. Right, so, but at the key, you're tying two verbs together. Right, so it's all, there are, those are all following those same rules. Okay. Jeez. Ah. So we have this yachyati, which is to be like something. And this could also, you'll see it in stories, like in that Kanakitak uh, story we were looking at a while ago. Just do yachyati yisha duchantuokat. Just the women who were like her went went to be by her. And I would think same clan. Oh, that guy's like me. I would assume that you're saying, but well, maybe you guys are similar, but I would also assume maybe same clan. Like me. So there is a second one, which is uwaya. And uwaya is for something to resemble something. So this is to be like something, but this is to resemble something. Very similar concepts. But you could say, um, they look like each other. Right? Um, and then you'll see this for some names too. Katsak uwa is a contraction. Uwaya can contract to uwa. And katsak uwa is it's like a squirrel. Looks like a squirrel. What do you think that's the name of? Anybody know? Chipmunk. It's got its own name, Kunaye. But we didn't no no one on the coast knows it because there's no chipmunks here. Isn't it the um the flying squirrels? Yeah, it's the flying squirrel, right? And so again, it's also something that's not really here. But when you see them, you're supposed to say, um, chew fat granny, chew fat granny, so our meat will be fat. So it's it's something, there's certain animals that you see and you're supposed to say, because it's pretty rare to see one, even where they are. And um, it's just, it's an old thing. You say that and then you're going to get, you're wishing for fatty meat when you go hunting. Uh, but but so uwaya means it, it resembles something, right? So it looks like it, but it's not the thing, right? So there's a certain type of uh, shark, I think, which is called chichuwa. It looks like a porpoise. But when you put ch in front of it, ch uwaya, this is just a way to start a metaphor phrase. It is as if, and as soon as you hear that, people are going to be waiting for you to make the metaphor connection. This is something that's very, very common 
in public speaking at ceremonies. Someone asks you to speak at Kuik, you can, you know, it's as if you held our hands with your words. It's like somebody, it's like they brought up a house post with the way you were talking. Um, and then uh, I know we talk about grammar a lot, and I want you to say it scrambles all of us, just like thinking of this super complex world that the Tlingit ancestors lived in and that we are living in as well. So we were talking about a bunch of grammar stuff, and there was a highly, highly fluent uh, speaker there. And he's listening to us, and he said, Then he's laughed, and he said, It's as if my mind got tangled in a sane net. So it, it happens. It was fun. But as far as like using and building metaphors, like I'll share this one with you and then we'll take a break and then we're going to do like a little fun story when we come back. So here's a kind of fun stack of metaphors. So Qaqan is the sun. It probably, it comes from a verb, gone, which is to burn or to light, like to light something on fire or to be lit. It's Those are possibly related to Gone, which is outside, gone, which is the smoke hole or the, the soft spot on a baby's head. Gun is firewood. Gun is a campfire. So those are all kind of related. This one you could see this, what we call the modal thing. It pops up right there, which is the same thing in Nachtu'at and Kukakasti. So a couple of fun things is um, if you were if you went up in the morning if you went for a walk like let's say right when the sun is sort of rising and it's a little bit foggy so the combination the angle of the sunlight and the fog maybe between two trees you're going to see this beam of light the sunbeam we call that qaqan khus the foot of the sun if you had some sort of light that also had a beam of light, that would also be a chus. So a beam of light has a leg. It's also a foot, but it's foot or leg. So if, uh, if you're looking out at the water, especially, and you got some clouds, and then the sun beam breaks through the clouds, and you could see it go from the sky to the ground, that's called kakan chusyi. The yi part is below, so below the foot of the sun. If the sun was shining in your window and then there was this patch of sunlight on the floor and like the cats like to go lay in that kind of stuff and um, that's called qaqan khus'i the footprint of the sun. So like when we think about this, and then we'll, we'll, we'll encounter storytellers like um, J.B. Fawcett, who told the Cots story. And what he said is, when the people went looking for this guy, so they they went with they took dogs to go look for him and the dogs that Tlingit people had of long ago they weren't like the dogs of today not like the dogs of today they're very intelligent they were they were really intelligent. They were smart like a person. So they really knew where the brown bear was, where its den was. 
Kushtiak Chakuk Sawe with Kate Kush Aku de Ayaul Shkaini Kakan Hus Yak Yeti Aku two day away I would suck. So it, it, no matter how far away that dog was, if it looked towards the, the den of that bear, it's the Kushtini Aya. Ku is a, a den or a layer. So no matter how far that dog was, when it looked towards that bear's den, its vision would pierce into it like sunbeams, like a beam of light. Would the hun a cow a cow a ark the cush tea near our cootsy? So, uh, the bear would see its vision coming in like a sunbeam and jump up and break it and would try to break their vision. And the dog wouldn't go blind, but they just wouldn't be able to see the bear. And it was wild, like how much detail they got into with this stuff because. You've got the sun, the foot, the dog, the vision, the bear seeing it, then the bear jumps up, and when it breaks it, it to break a beam of light is the same verb to break a rope. So just layers and layers of fun stuff that you can kind of unpack. And part of it is just meaning, like associating like these these different concepts and these different images. And uh, I think it's really fun stuff. But uh, we'll pause unless you guys get any questions. Okay, we're gonna take a break, but make sure you've got all your get all your dictionaries out, opens whatever you whatever you're using. Get the verb database fired up and be ready. You're gonna you're going to be quickly looking at a picture and making a sentence to describe what is happening. You're not gonna know the whole story, but you're gonna make it and there's no wrong way to do it. It's just for fun. But um, that's what we'll do when we come back. So uh, take 10 and we'll see you at a quarter to.
Okay. Can get you in Quasi. Ah. Uh. Cheese. Okay. So we're gonna try this. What I'm gonna do is I will. Um, I'll have to see. I think when I put folks in breakout rooms, it gets a little different. The things that I think get a little bit different is I'm not sure if I can screen share while you folks are in the breakout room. So what I'll try and do is drop the image into the chat, which should work. And then I'm going to break you into groups of probably four people, right around four, maybe three. We'll see. And we'll try it. And I'll give you uh, three minutes to come up with a sentence based on the image that you see. And the idea is this is collectively telling a story. And they don't have to be the same. There is no correct answer for this activity. Just come up with something. Uh, feel free to, no one will be watching you in your group. I'm, I'm just going to be sitting here preparing for the next one. You will get uh, at two minutes, you'll see that the room, you'll get a note that says the room is closing in one minute, but feel free to take that full last minute if you feel like you need it. Any questions before we start? Will we be um, executed if our stories aren't perfect? <laughs> <laughs> there will be no torture or executions this evening. There will be no, no one gets voted off the island. It's all for fun and it's all to see what we come up with. And um, yeah, just enjoy it and just see what you can do as well. So my, I would suggest look at the story, come come up with some ideas. And if, if you're at about the one minute mark, you probably should start putting your sentence together just because it might, it might take a little while and, and just to figure out how to say the specific thing. And um, we'll just see, we'll do, and then when we come back, all the groups will report back and we'll write down all the sentences. Um, I prefer if when pick someone in your group who can type it out in the chat so I can copy and paste it and I don't have to type it as you're talking. Um, when, when we did, when we did this exercise once with, uh, like master storytellers in the room and like they're on page and we just give them like this 16 page thing and they're on page. I was like, how's it going? And everyone's on like page 10 or something. I go to this one group and like, they're on page one with this huge like story there. You know, so like it's just one sentence per image. If you want to go two, that's fine, but you don't have to do like a huge storytelling mode. Don't go into master storyteller mode. At least I don't recommend it. Okay. So let me see eight per room. Okay. I'm going to try five rooms and we'll see how that works. And when we come, we're actually, we're going to do different groups each time. Basically, I'm just going to say it's automatically and see what happens. Uh, feel free to give feedback after we try it this first time. Let me know if it was, uh, if the time was too long, time was too short, groups are too big, groups are too small. Uh, but I'm going to open the rooms and send everybody to their rooms in one minute. Okay, I got three. I thought you might drop the image before you grouped us. I will. Oh, so what I'll do is I will put the image in the chat. Now it's there. Rooms are open. I'll pause the recording. <laughs> 